Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to do my New Year's Day 2020 beer review and for this one um, I just want to thank all of you guys watching the channel for your support across 2019 and I hope that continues into 2020. We reviewed some really really nice beers, we got to go to some really interesting places as well and uh, it was a really nice year for the channel I thought and I really hope that for you guys in your personal lives 2019 was good and 2020 is going to be even better so we've got a nice beer to kick off 2020 with here today I think. For this one we are going to go to Germany and we're going to return to one of the very famous Weiss beer breweries and you've seen me review maybe three or four beers from these guys on the channel before. So we're going to go to Kelheim which is a little bit to the north of Munich and we're having a taste of another beer from Schneider Weisse, or to give them their full name uh, Weisses Brauhaus G. Schneider und Zon. So this one is the tap number five, the Hopfen Weisse. I've seen it also called the Mein Hopfen Weisse and it comes in at 8.2% ABV which is the same alcohol content incidentally as the famous Aventinus beer and uh, we'll just need to see how we get on with this one. This is yet another beer that I picked up at liquor shop Asahiya in Taishibashi Yamaichi here in Osaka and um, most of the Japanese beers that I review on the channel when I come here are from there but they also have some really interesting German things and uh, Belgian beers as well and quite often some of the Belgian beers and German things that I find over here in Japan are ones that I I've never actually seen before in Europe so it's kind of interesting the way the import system seems to work over here. When I bought this beer I actually thought it was a special edition as well because this one like I say normally it was called the when I'd seen it before it had a white label and it was also called the Mein Hopfen Weisse and it didn't actually say anything about Weizen Doppelbock on the front label from what I remember but this is just the regular tap number five and they've changed the label a little bit but it's been one that I've wanted to try for a little while and it's cool to finally get a around to doing that for you. But as I say, bought at Liquor Shop Asahiya, um, Koji and Rika that run the shop are great. They supply basically most of my Japanese beers that I review for you, so make sure you check out the link to their Facebook page in the description below and uh, go and visit it if you get the chance if you find yourself here in Osaka. Probably the best beer shop in the city actually. So um, yeah, curious to see how this one turns out and definitely cool to return to Schneiderweiser after about 18 months or something like that. It must be at least, it maybe even as two years actually since I last reviewed a beer from these guys. So hopefully you guys enjoy my take on this one and I'm very curious to see how it turns out. A good beer to kick off 2020 with. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Schneider Weisse before. No doubt there will be some more at some point in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the German beers that I've reviewed for you that's being added to whenever I get the opportunity and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about the Schneider Weiss Brewery then, or Weiss's Brauhaus G. Schneider und so on. So this brewery, as I mentioned to you earlier, is one of the very famous German Weiss beer breweries. Originally they were based in the city of Munich, but they're now based in a little town called Kelheim to the north of the city. So the brewery's beers are quite recognisable due to the names being like Tap 1 to 7, although they do also have a Tap 11 which I believe is a very low alcohol beer and they've also got the Tap X which tends to be the kind of special edition beers. You have seen me review one of those on the channel before which if memory serves me correctly it was the Tap X Nelson Sovine which was a Weizenbock using uh, Nelson Sovine hops from New Zealand and that was a beautiful beer I have to say. So you will get kind of special releases from this brewery every so often actually. But the company itself was founded back in 1872 by Georg Schneider I who was the first commoner of King Louis. Uh, Ludwig II of Bavaria who was granted the right to brew wheat beer. So the company's remained in the possession of the immediate descendants of Georg Schneider since its inception. In 1944 the Allied bombing of Munich damaged much of the brewery's facilities in the city and so the decision was taken by the, the company to move the main production out to Kelheim and although the, the company headquarters though I think do still remain in Munich. So the current brewery, the Weisses Brauhaus zu Kelheim, is actually the oldest wheat beer brewery in Bavaria and it has been a brewery 
celebrate since the year 1607 when it was erected by Duke Maximilian I and it was called uh, at that time the Kurfürstliches Hofbräuhaus and it belonged to the Schneiders since 1928. So today the company employs around 100 people and they distribute their beer throughout Germany and to 27 other countries around the world. Apparently the annual output of this brewery is around 300,000 hectolitres of beer per year which is pretty impressive actually. Um, like I said to you the their main releases um, they've got the Tap 11 and then the Tap 7 so there's eight kind of regular beers. The Tap X is usually what they call the kind of special edition beers that they release and you'll find those there's, there's quite a few different Tap X's actually and I need to see about reviewing some more of them for you on the channel in the future but I did manage to pick one of them up when I was in um, in Germany itself. That must have been about two and a bit years ago now when I was there with my cousin. But yeah, um, really cool to return to this brewery. If you like uh, Hefeweizens and things, you can, you know, this is one of the breweries that you definitely want to try along with the uh, the Meiselweiss. I really need to review that beer for you on the channel as well. But I've reviewed the um, the Aventinus Icebock, I've reviewed the Aventinus and then I've also reviewed the um, Tapex Nelson Sovin. So I do need to see about reviewing the original one from these guys at some point as well. So um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Gay, uh, about Gay Schneider. Uh, or Weisses Brauhaus G. Schneider & Son, to give it its full name, or the Schneider Weiss Brauerei uh, from Kelheim in Munich. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and things like that. And, of course, you can uh, go and check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages too, and that will give you more details on all the different beers that they have. And you can go and visit their various bars that they have around Munich and uh, Kelheim. I do want to go back to Munich and do some filming out on site and things like that. You know, it'd be cool to go up to Kelheim and film, um, you know, and film at the, the Schneider Weiser Brewery. I need to do that as well for um, for the likes of Veltenberg and Weinstefan as well. Those would be some really cool videos to make. But um, yeah, I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one then before we open it up. As I mentioned to you at the start of the video, this one is an 8.2% Weizen Doppelbock, they're calling it, rather than just a Weizen Bock. Um, they've changed the label on this fairly recently. As you can see, this is a nice kind of green label. Um, I remember the original ones being white, but also having a good bit of green in the uh, the colour as well. But, you know, this is one that I think is, um, I think the new label is pretty cool, I have to say. It's a little bit more modern than the other one, actually. But, you know, from memory, the other ones that um, Schneider Weiss had before, and the ones that Meisler Weiss were using, they were very classically German. This one is just a little bit more kind of um, modern, I have to say. But one of the things as well with Schneider Weiss, you'll always get different bottle caps on them. And you can see on the back, there is the Bayerische Beer symbol, the sort of protected status that these types of beer have from the European Union. The thing like Scotch whiskey and French champagne and stuff like that have it. You can see the Japanese import sticker on there as well. But this particular beer was apparently introduced back in 2008 and originally it was brewed as a collaboration between Georg Schneider, the IV, so the fourth, um, and um, it was brewed and also with uh, Garrett Olivier from, or Garrett Oliver, I forget which his name is, from Brooklyn Brewing Company over in America. So um, yeah, 8.2% Weizenbock, this one, definitely a cool beer to kick off 2020 with. So let's get it out and into the glass. I'm really curious to see what this beer has in store. Nice little bit of smoke on the opening then. This one is a half litre bottle, of course, which is typical for German beers. I will say as well, um, Normally you would drink the um, like any type of wheat beer in a wide topped glass, but you know unfortunately I don't have a Weizen glass here at Michiko's parents' house in Japan, so I prefer to use these tulip glasses. You know I've got one of these here because this is to be honest the best all rounder for different beer styles. The tulip glass will work for pretty much any beer style. So um, yeah, and I should say as well that Weizen beers, wheat beers are very popular here in Japan. A lot of the little Jibiru breweries, or local beer breweries as they call them here, um, a lot of them tend to brew um, wheat beers as well. And you can find some really nice examples. One of the best ones that I've found so far actually was from the Kurofune Brewery, which is down in Hiroshima. And um, they've got a really, really nice wheat beer. And the uh, Fujizakura Heights, they've got a nice Weizen as well. And Mino Beer here in Osaka, they do some really interesting fruit Weizens, which 
are, uh, are very good and quite different actually, but very solid in their German roots. So um, yeah, if you get the chance, try some Pilsners and Kulshis and Alt beers and wheat beers and stuff like that here in Japan. It's a very, um, Japan is a very German influenced company, uh, country rather, when it comes to, uh, to brewing beer. But yeah, when you look at this, this is a lovely looking beer. I'm actually surprised at how um, light this is in colour. I mean, normally for a Weizenbock, I would expect it to be a little bit more somewhere along the lines of, uh, you know, somewhere a bit closer to what you would expect from a Dunkel Weizen, to be honest with you. I remember Dunkel Weizens being a little bit darker than this, but maybe it's just because I've not had one in quite a little while, actually. You will see a review coming up from uh, Y Market Brewing, their um, Nacht Music. Um, they're a very good Japanese brewery as well. They produced a Weizenbock for Christmas, so you'll see that in a few videos' time. And that was a very nice beer. But that was about the same colour as this. I always think that Weizenbocks um, should be, you know, I always thought they were a little bit darker than this. So, yeah, I think I told you lies in that video that's coming up. But, um, yeah, this one looks really nice. If you shine the light through this beer, it's actually quite a bright orangey colour, I have to say. You could see that there was a solid finger of a frothy, I would actually say perfect white head with this one. It's maybe very slightly creamy around the edges when the head gets a bit thicker, but a very bright full head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there, but you can see it is retaining the head pretty nicely, but maybe that's just because I'm kind of shoogling the beer up actually. So um, yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma with this one then. Nothing overly surprising about this beer, considering it's a Weizenbock. As I say, I just thought these beers were a little bit darker than they actually are. You can see lovely hazy quality to it. So um, yeah, let's have a look at the aroma and see how we get on. Ooh, that's pretty nice actually. It comes across as a very bright beer, I have to say. Um, That's really interesting. Um, I like how that goes together. I mean, the first thing that it strikes me as, it almost strikes me as being a little bit kind of, it really comes across as a very clean smelling beer. I mean, straight away with this one, you can get the nice bright wheat out of this. It is really quite citrusy. I find this beer very, very citrusy. Um, so you can smell that nice kind of white bready base to it. Um, there's also, there is a little bit of a kind of biscuity, brown sugary kind of thing in there. There's a good bit of a sort of bubblegum aroma coming out of this one too. It does come across as quite sweet and candied this beer I have to say. Um, and that I think is kind of, there's quite a bit of a citrusy element to this one as well and that sort of, um, that's only kind of pushing the kind of candied aromas and things that you'll get out of this beer actually. That's a really interesting point to uh, to make out of this one. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very bright, citrusy, zesty beer, this. Um, I, I didn't quite expect it to be like that, actually, but then again, when it's a Hopfenweise, you would expect that. So I think this one is a little bit more of a kind of... Um, it's definitely a little bit more of a a bright, citrusy version of Aventinus, perhaps. It's maybe got quite... Some of the... The Aventinus I remember being a very kind of big, thick, malty beer. This one is definitely a lot brighter than that. Um, so it makes sense actually. Um, maybe I'm thinking I'm thinking this beer should perhaps be a little bit more malty than it is. But when it's you know called a Hopfenweiser, then that sort of makes sense to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I really like that about this beer. Um, so yeah, let's just focus on the hoppy side for a minute and we'll see if the malts come out a little bit more. But yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, there's a good bit of a floral character to this one. I wouldn't be surprised if this beer is using some American hops. You know, maybe something like Centennial or something like that. There is a little bit of a, a big lemony, zesty kind of quality to this one. Um, you know, th there are a few higher alpha acid hops in Germany. I mean, you've got the classic Hallertau and Tittnanger. You've also got the likes of Hercules and Pearl, which are a little bit higher in alpha acid. You've got the, the Mandarina Bavaria and stuff as well. And you I mean, there's a few, there's a... Um, there's a few other ones. There's like Hallertau Blanc and things like that, but I don't think there's Hallertau Blanc in here because it's Hallertau Blanc is like a. It's almost like Nelson Sauvignon, but it's a little bit more. Um, it's got the the kind of more German nobly type grassy notes to it. Um, 
I'd be curious to know what hops they've put in this because the floral notes are very, very bright and very, um, very inviting actually. So there's a lot of nice grassy and floral notes to this beer. There's a little touch of earthiness in the back of the nose as well. Um, you've also got some nice kind of lemony, citrusy notes. I would say that there's maybe a little bit of a kind of limey quality in this beer as well actually. There's maybe just a little touch of that but I'd say mainly a kind of lemony citrusy note coming out of this. Um, let's look at the malts again because like I say there's quite a bit going on there. You can definitely smell that big white bready wheaty note that you'd expect. Some kind of thicker doughy notes in there as well. The bananas are definitely coming out. I don't find this one as kind of... Uh, I don't find this one as kind of thick as the Aventinus was. Like I said, it's the same alcohol content and things, but I don't find the caramel and the biscuit and things like that as prominent in this beer. There is a little bit of it there, but it's really nowhere near as prominent as in the other one. But then again, as I say, when it's a hop from Weisse, you do expect the hops to, you know, take the, you know, take the beer by its horns, if you like, so uh, or take the beer by the reins, I guess you could say. So yeah, a very bright and interesting smelling beer this one. Take a bit of time and enjoy that but I have to admit I'm quite surprised at how just how hoppy this beer actually is to be honest with you so um, yeah let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. This one is the tap number five um, the Mein Hopfenweisse, as it was previously called, but now it's called the Hopfenweisse Weizen Doppelbock, coming in at 8.2% from the Weisses Brauhaus Ge Schneider und Sohn from Kelheim, just outside of music or, uh, Munich, or uh, the Schneider Weisse Brauhaus, as I guess it's more colloquially known. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange, Skoll, Kampai, Happy New Year 2020. That's really interesting actually because it comes across as um, a lot more malty in the flavour than it the, the hot than the aroma was going to give you the impression of. That's um that's just that's a really interesting point to make about this beer. It's a lot more malty than the aroma would have you believe actually. But then, you know, a Hefeweizen of any description, be it a Weizenbock, a Dunkelweizen or whatever, they're always, they are multi-leaning beers, they don't have a lot of bitterness and things in them. Um, so that's, in some ways it's surprising because of the aroma, but you know, when you know what these styles are like, it's not. So um, yeah, that's, that's interesting to, to pick that up from this beer. So yeah, let's try and break the flavour of this one down then, I mean, it's a lovely beer that um, it's, it's definitely a good bit brighter than the um, it's definitely a good bit brighter than the than the Aventinus was I can tell you that straight away the Aventinus was a lovely big kind of smooth sweet malty beast of a beer so um, yeah and um, straight away with this one then you can feel that nice white bready wheaty quality that just blankets the middle of your tongue on top of that um, and as you go further into the aftertaste, you can feel that the sort of wheaty notes, it's kind of infused with that kind of clovey spice that you normally expect of the Hefeweizen. There's definitely some sort of banana flavours in there. As you come further forward on the tongue, you start to get a little bit more of the kind of banana notes out of this one. And it's almost a little bit um, bubblegummy as well, but not as bubblegummy as some of the ones that you're going to come across. It definitely has a bit of that candied banana bubblegummy type flavour in the middle of the palate too. Um, if you go into the very centre of your tongue, that's where you'll get a little bit of brown sugar out of this one. And that's the, the boozy aspects of the beer coming out. So yeah, you, the, you will find as the flavour evolves a little bit more, you get a little bit more of a kind of sweet caramelly note out of this one. As you move further out from the centre of your palate, it does perhaps become that little bit more kind of um, biscuity and things like that. Um, so I really like how that goes together. Um, it's th this malt, The malt base in this one is definitely all about how everything sort of um, slides in together and it works pretty damn well I have to say. I like that about this beer. It's not as big and sweet and um, syrupy almost as the Aventinus was. Um, 
So that's definitely a point to make about this beer, but I think when it's a hop from Weiser, like I said, you want it to be a little bit less pronounced to let the hops come out a little bit. So that, that really makes sense with it. Um, in terms of the, the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, you've got a little bit of earthiness there. I um, mean, it's quite a, a kind of smooth, slightly sweet earthiness as you would expect from the noble hops but as you come further forward along the sides of the palate that smoothens out a little bit you get some nice floral aromaticity on the front corners of the palate then around the very front curve of the tongue it's just that little bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy in my opinion and I really have to say I, I like that about this beer I'm a big fan of my Hallertau and Tetnanger hops actually and I think going by the flavour those are the hops that are used mainly as the bittering hops in this beer. With any type of Weizen, of course, you don't want it to be too bitter because then that takes away from the, the malty presence that these beers are supposed to have. I think, if I remember correctly, from brewing um, a Weizen beer before, it's somewhere in the region of like 40% of your malt base has to be wheat and 60% of it usually is... Um, it's like pale malt or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's where you get the nice big thick qualities out of these out of these beers. Um, but yeah, just basically straight up noble hops in the um, in the flavour of this one. But in fairness, you do get a little bit of a slightly stronger floral aromatic spice out of this one. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're using one of the you know the sort of the slightly higher alpha acid hops like the Hercules or the um, or the Pearl, or something like that in this beer. I think Hercules is about 8% alpha acid, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's something like that, because there is just a little touch of spiciness on the edge of the palate with this one. But as I always say, behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that little oily bubble, where those juicy, fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. And for me, this one has... Um, it's got a really nice... The, the way the fruity notes in this beer come out are very, very nice, actually. So yeah, um, where to start with the fruity side of things here? Um, it's definitely, it's still quite a citrusy one there. As you say, you've got these kind of, you can feel behind the front part of that palette, you can feel the kind of banana -y notes, the sort of candied banana bubble gummy notes. They're starting to push forward into the, the flavour a little bit into the fruity side of the beer rather. Um, but to me, this one, if you go to the fr very front tip of your tongue, there is definitely a sort of lemony, zesty quality to this. It's maybe a little bit limey as well, to be honest with you. Um, and I would say, generally, I find this beer to be really quite lemon limey. There's maybe a little bit of a slightly peary or apple ester in there as well. There's a few elements of like, um, you know, a very slightly, a very slight like red fruity character as well, like a kind of, a very slightly candied red fruity note to this beer and you'll notice that the further you go into the aftertaste as well the things that really linger here in the aftertaste for me is a little bit of the brown sugar in the centre of your palate that's covering up the booziness of course the floral aromatic notes on the side of the tongue and then the lemon limey zest at the front of the palate as well but I mean um, overall I think this is a really quite nice um, it is a really interesting um, how do you say this? It's a really quite interesting beer. This I've not, I don't think I've I've had a hop and Weiser from one of the, the sort of classic German breweries, if that makes sense. But I think they've done a damn nice job of this. Um, I don't, as I say, I don't know if I prefer this one over the Aventinus. I think probably I would go for the more malty Aventinus beer. But I think people that watch the channel know that I'm a bit more of a sucker for uh, for malts than than hops, if you like. Um, but I do enjoy a good hoppy beer at the same time. With wheat beers, I think I prefer them more malty. I think it's fair to say that. Mm. But yeah, definitely quite a lemon limey um, quality to the, the sort of front part of your palate. That sort of takes over the whole kind of um, top of your palate there. But this is a beautiful beer and definitely worth trying if you get the chance. It's not quite what I expected, I have to admit. I thought when they're saying it's a Weizen Doppelbock, you know, I was expecting something more along the lines of like the, the Schlenkerla Urbock or something like that, but well, not smoky if you like. Maybe, probably something more along the lines of like the Assambok from Weltenburger, but just with a more kind of bready, wheaty presence. This one um, wasn't quite what I was expecting, I have to say, but it turned out to be a very nice beer uh, nonetheless. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say 
This is quite a full bodied beer, probably at the bottom end of full bodied. Yeah, quite a full bodied beer. Carbonation is really quite smooth in this one. I've always said that about German beer. I love the smoothness that German beer gives you. The Brauhaus smoothness as I call it, but probably the Germans watching the channel would laugh at me saying that. But yeah, very, very smooth beer this one. Uh, the mouthfeel overall, very smooth, a little bit oily, but also quite clean. You do get a, a good, the, the water quality in this beer is pretty damn good and that gives it that little bit of a wet mouth feel. Um, in terms of hoppy bitterness and stuff, I think we're talking maybe about 35 or 40 IBUs with this one. It does have a nice little bit of spicy floral note on the edge of the palate. The malt base, like I said, is very, very smooth. There's a degree of sweetness to it as well. A um, little teeny bit of um, kind of spiciness. It does dry out a little bit the further you go into the palate. And on the fruity side of things, it's quite zesty and it gets a little bit drier in the aftertaste as well. So, I mean, overall, it's a really... Um, it's a really quite nice beer, this one, and I like I like how it goes together. It wasn't quite what I expected, like I said, but I've really enjoyed reviewing this one for you, and I think this was definitely a good beer to kick off 2020 with. So, um, yeah, let's leave it at that. This one is the tap number five, the Mein Hopfenweiser, as it was previously known, or now the Hopfenweiser uh, Weizen Doppelbock at 8.2% from Weisses Brauhaus, Gay, Schneider und Zahn, or the Schneider Weiss Brauerei in Kelheim to the north of Munich in Bavaria in the south of Germany. Um, an awesome beer and I'm glad I was able to review this one for you. So yeah, on to more Japanese reviews tomorrow. But thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from the Schneider Weiss Brauer. Pardon me, Brown Eye as well. Let me know some other advice beers that you'd like to see me review on the channel because I've been feeling recently that this is a style that I need to kind of get back into a little bit. I used to love vice, uh, vice beers but I haven't reviewed too many over 2019 actually so let's try and fix that in 2020 but awesome to return to this brewery like I said and uh, definitely cool to try this particular beer. So yeah, let me know your own thoughts on it, check out my social media, check out all the social media and things for Schneider Weisse and I will catch you guys very soon. The tap number five from the Schneider Weisse Brauerei, the Hopfen Weisse in Kelheim near Munich in Germany. Slanja, Skull, Kampai, happy 2020. Cheers.